Hello everyone, this is Kate, and in this tips and tricks video, I'm going to be talking about pens and inks. First, I'm going to introduce you to some pens you can use for your pen and ink drawings. The first pen that I'm going to talk about is this Pilot G2 pen. You can pick these up at Walmart or Target, any store that sells school supplies or office supplies. This is an extra fine point pen, but they also come in different width. It makes a really clear line and it's very evenly black. The only complaint I have about this pen is that it's not waterproof. If you're going to be putting a uh, liquid ink or any water-based art materials over this pen, it will smudge on the paper. The next pen I'm going to tell you about are these Micron pens. They come in a variety of different colors and sizes and they're permanent. They have archival quality ink and they are waterproof. If you do have a little bit of money left to spend, go for the Micron pen because they are a good quality pen. You can get really professional drawings out of them and they aren't too expensive. They're about two to three dollars a piece. The next kind of pens you can use are brush pens. I have two kinds of brush pens here. The first is a Pigma brush pen. This is made by the same company that makes the Microns. And this other one is a Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen. Brush pens are good if you want to go from a very thick line to a very thin line, or if you want to fill in a large area of ink. The last ink I'm going to show you is liquid ink. This is by Higgins. The bottle says it's waterproof and it is a drawing ink. So I'm just going to take a little bit of ink and put it in this dish. Now you can apply this ink with either a pen or a brush. Right here I just have brushes. And I usually use liquid ink if I have a big space of color or black to fill in. I don't really use it a lot for fine lining. You can get a very fine, even line if you have a pen or the proper brush to use. I'm just using a watercolor brush right now and that works just fine for me. Now I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to outline your work with these Pigma Micron pens. So when you make an outline or a line art for your drawing, you want to do two things. First, you want to vary the width of the line you're drawing. And second, you want to create little gaps in the drawing. And both of these add interest to your subject and it just makes the drawing a little stronger overall. So this first little blob monster I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just do a solid outline on them. I'm not going to vary the line at all or make little gaps and I'm just gonna show you what it looks like and then with the second one we're gonna make him a little bit more interesting. Here's the first blob monster. This is just using a single line from this Micron 05. And as you can see, the line art makes it look very flat and very boring. There's not a lot of variety with the lines. The second blob monster, I'm going to establish a light source that's going to be this little sun up here. And this is how I know where the line gaps are going to come from. So the sun is going to just create a little bit of gap in what I'm going to show you in a second. And then I'm going to go over this 05 micron with the 08 at the end to sort of double it up.
So if you compare these two blob monsters side by side, do you see how the line variety and the light gives this blob monster a little more sense of depth and a little more of where the uh, shadows and the highlights are supposed to be than this blob monster right here. So by varying your line and creating these little line gaps you see right here, you're able to tell the viewer of the drawing a little bit more and keep their interest in the drawing a little longer. Now I'm going to show you four techniques you can do with shading. The first technique is hatching. And hatching is just straight lines going in one direction. If you make a set of lines in the opposite direction like this, it's called cross hatching. And cross hatching can have two intersecting lines or you can use three intersecting lines. And each time you do this, you're making the spot darker and darker. The last technique is stippling and I'm going to use a brush pen for this. With stippling, you're just creating a bunch of little small dots next to each other. And as you get farther and farther away from the drawing, the concentrated dots begin to look like a shape. Last technique, you can use liquid ink. And this is just creating a wash over your drawing to create the shadow. I'm going to use the techniques I just showed you to shade in this blob monster right here. And hopefully this will give you some ideas for shading in a project of your own. And now this blob monster is all shaded in and all finished. Yay! So this is the drawing demonstration of a girl with one angel wing and one demon wing. This drawing is a little bit more intricate than something you may want to start out with if this is your first pen and ink drawing, but I'm just showing you how you can combine all the techniques I showed you in this video, and you can make some pretty nice drawings with these techniques. So I made a solid outline on the drawing, and the reason behind this is because I wanted the figure to be solid. If it's a solitary figure, or I don't want it to be cute, I want it to bring a presence to the drawing, it can be solid. But that's my choice of doing this. Right now I'm doing the shading. I'm just showing you different ways you can combine the techniques that I showed you and just take what you can and leave the rest. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos by me. Other than that, I hope you have a nice day, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments section. Alright, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching! He's going to have a cake. And he's one year old. Woo! Go Blood Monster Cake!